Hi, I'm going to tell you first of all about the peak flow meter. I've got one here and all it is is a tube. As you blow through it, a little pointer moves up to give you a value that you can um, read. It's used like this and you blow as hard and fast as possible through it. You would do that have a look at the reading, reset it, do it again. In total you do it three times and you take the highest reading. The peak flow meter measures the maximum airflow that you can get out of your lungs. The apparatus you use for measuring lung volumes is called a spirometer. We've got a picture of one, um, hopefully just coming up, and you should notice that it's connected to the subject by tubes. The subject has to have all of the air that's going in and out of their lungs monitored, so they'll have a nose clip and they'll be sealed in to that machine. Outlined in blue is a wedge um, this moves up and down like bellows um, and as it moves up and down the pen on the end will make a trace on the chart recorder just zigzagging up and down. That wedge will move up and down um, as you breathe in and out through the machine. There's one other thing on this spirometer that you need to take notice of and that is soda lime. The soda lime removes carbon dioxide that's exhaled um, from the subject. That means that as you breathe into this machine, you're gradually losing a volume of air purely because the oxygen that's been converted to carbon dioxide is removed from that volume. The trace will slope downwards because of this. The only other reason a trace might slope down is if the subject isn't sealed in properly and air is lost from the um, machine. That's quite an old style of machine. Um, if you're attached to it for too long you run out of oxygen because all of the oxygen is contained within that um, wedge. Um, for modern usage we'd use something that looks more like this which consists of a flow gauge a bacterial filter so people aren't catching bacteria that's been collected on the actual flow meter itself and a cardboard mouthpiece um, to attach your subject to. What you end up doing as a subject and I'll demonstrate this once um, with me breathing and then I'll push the picture of the trace that I've done earlier through and you should see how that works out in, in real life and then there's a few volumes you do need to know about but there you go there's a nose clip got on uh, and Right, what you will have seen there is um, quiet breathing at rest. I'm not doing anything extra. Um, that normal in and out breathing is called your tidal volume. I took a really deep breath in. It was the maximum I could inspire. And that um, would have given me on the trace an inspiratory reserve volume that can be measured. I then push as much air out of my lungs as possible and that means from the trace you can work out my expiratory reserve volume.
Right, so what you will have noticed when I've gone through that is that I will have something called a vital capacity. That is the maximum amount of air that I could inhale and exhale, the maximum amount of air that I could usefully use in my lungs. Um, normal tidal volume is just to keep me alive if I'm at rest. But if I want to do anything extra to resting, I'm going to eat into my inspirational and expirational reserve volume. If I run out of that, because I've got some sort of a lung condition, um, I'm going to go blue and possibly collapse and have real, real difficulty. So if you've got restricted lung volumes, it's difficult to do exercise. Typically, I can't completely empty my lungs. Um, if a steamroller went over me or I got rolled up like a tube of toothpaste, then possibly you could squeeze all the air out of my lungs. But my rib cage gives me a structure that means I've always got some residual air left in my lungs. That's called a residual volume. If I knew what that was, I could work out my total lung capacity. Normal tidal volume, you'd normally breathe in and out about half a litre. The um, vital capacity that you have as a male, because you're generally taller and you've got slightly bigger body, would be about five litres. That's two, two and a half litre bottles of Coke. You've got to think that you can actually use um, if you need to. If you're a female, generally slightly shorter, slightly smaller build, three and a half litres to four litres vital capacity. Look for tidal volume, normally half a litre, just gentle in and out, and then the reserve volumes are the extras that you can breathe in or out.